Dystopia tonight. Tonight. Hey, how Thanks. you doing, man? I'm good, man. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, John. Um, did I get Did I get all those credits right? I believe yeah. it was. Yeah, you did. I just, uh, you know, my disclaimer is I wrote for Dennis when he was a liberal. So yeah, I gotta get uh, that out yeah. of. Kid, never have you written for his AM radio show? <laughs> <laughs> I love, that's that's the craziest shit to me man if, oh. if i think about all the 80s you know comics and back in the day his decline is bewildering to me well it's it's amazing to me i tuned in and i really did tune in one day he's got fucking daryl isa on who's a goddamn criminal he's yeah i can swear right because oh yeah oh absolutely go nuts the kids are in bed on the east coast but so yeah i was like <laughs> He's got fucking Daryl Issa on, who's a just really massive piece of shit out here in California. Yeah. You know, people have a misconception about California. We have really disturbing red pockets here. It's like the home of so many skinheads and white supremacists. It's unbelievable. Uh -huh. Anytime, it any, any of the three city areas, and even San Diego's pretty fucked up. Right. And he, he's got Daryl Issa, you know, you know, gangster, criminal, politician. He's going, Daryl, I can't believe it, man. How can people disagree with you on stuff? You got it so perfect. You nail it every time, man. Wow. I'm just like, oh, my God, what yeah. happened? Right? What happened? He said after 9-11, man, I couldn't just, man, 9-11 really goofed me up. I was like, those are Saudis. Mm -hmm. I would do fucking become a Republican because of Saudi Arabia. Right. Like, none of it made sense to me. And, and you know what's crazy? I feel like the amount of people that got fucked up by 9-11 versus the amount of them that came pieces became pieces of shit. Like, it's not an excuse. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get to say, you know, 9-11 really made me a fucking asshole. You know, and it's like, what? Yeah. How did that yeah. happen? It's, it, it's really absurd. You know, and, uh, I mean, by the way, the, the scary thing is, have, I don't know what the percentage is of people go, oh, you know what? Uh, it's an inside job, right? You know that, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Uh-huh. Anytime and when people open a conversation with me about, you know what's going on with Bill Gates, I'm I'm out. I'm <laughs> I know. I don't even I'm good. I yep. don't I don't, you know. It was I was I was talking to uh uh I was, oh it was oh, I was talking to uh uh I had Mike Farrell on the other day from, you know, and I I couldn't wrap my head around this, and I'd love to get your take on this too. Because first of all, I don't we've we've never actually met in person, but uh, yeah. your online uh, just presence in general is <laughs> like I'm like, is he more left than me? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like when you find somebody like that, and then he's also in the business, you're just like, holy shit, this guy is. So I love all the stuff you pose. I feel like we we have similar taste. But I go into a store to get my I, I bike to bike a lot, so I went to get my bike fixed. I live. Um, you know, LBI, I don't want to, you know, exact, but I live in LBI in New Jersey. And, uh, and I go to this little bike shop or whatever. And I think what lovely people they're elderly. They've been, it's a family business. They seem to know their shit about bikes and motherfucker. I see a Trump bumper sticker under a, like sticking out, like, like almost like they were trying to hide it. And immediately I, I was like, what do I, I'm like, it's basically to me, it's almost like seeing the fucking Nazi fly. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where I'm no, like, it's to me, it's it's every time it happens to me, it's the ending of Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I. And it, it really sometimes it breaks my heart because they seem okay. Yeah, they seem normal, and then you go, oh, you're a white supremacist, you're a racist. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, you did that so good. What with the courtesy and the being sweet and the talking about the weather. I had no idea <laughs> for a white supremacist. Bravo. Cosplay. 
yeah, it's like yeah. Cosplay. Right. And that's the thing where I'm like, Jesus, man. I'm like, come on, John. Like, and I, and again, it's like, it's like those things you see. I feel like if I wa- I watched that scene in a movie and I was me, I'd be like, don't trust those fucking old people. Cause they'll kill, <laughs> like, you know, but I didn't see it. I fell for it. She's talking to me about electric bikes and where they go in the summer and her husband. And I'm like, nodding away like a moron and then that that shit's just there and it but it's weird too because you go wait you give a shit about the environment wait <laughs> you right yeah. right you know trump is like literally drill fucking bears ear <laughs> you know it's like he fucking just built a fucking holiday inn in yellowstone you know that right i mean yeah you know, it's because it's you know it used to be what's terrible about the republicans is the NRA and the Republicans, they used to be environmentalists. Right. Yeah. Nixon was the clean water guy. You know, Teddy mm-hmm. fucking Roosevelt created the national parks. Right. And um, the NRA used to actually serve a function, which was not to make fucking howitzers for dipshits. It was <laughs> actually teach you. It's more like the Boy Scouts back in the 50s and 60s, even the 70s. Mm-hmm. And they just lost sight of anything they fucking stood for. That's not right. an earthquake. My dog is scratching her neck, right? Oh, my God. I literally thought you were like, in the, I was like, holy shit, I have a guest in the middle of an earthquake right now. It can fucking happen. I mean, I've been here for a bunch of them. Uh, oh, man. But you know, you're right about that. Like, do you, do you ever, I read this thing recently, and they and they gave this, uh, actually, it's kind of funny. I, it'd be hilarious if I actually read it on your stream. Um, but they gave like a, a diagram, basically, of what they teach in uh, in Europe about American politics yeah. and how it, what it actually looks like versus what Americans, like we think Obama's on the left, but they actually teach that Obama's middle, you know, a uh, little closer to the right. And then like Trump and all those guys are like literally falling off the edge yeah. into, you know, that's where Republicans are. And then, you know, and, and it's incredible because that is, I mean, that's what I kind of, that's how I kind of see it too. And no. it is, it's crazy how crazy it's changed. Well, it's weird to me too, because you go, and I suspect everything too. When Biden says we're leaving Afghanistan, and I'm like, great. And then they right. go, we're expanding our drone program. I go, oh well, it's good. Okay, yeah, right. because that's not going to make more terrorists, right? And it's actually, you know what? I've said it before. It's cowardly as shit. The drone yeah. while killing people in third world countries or small nations where we are just a fucking bully now. Yep. And um, it's amazing to me that. That, that we're not kind of, that more people aren't horrified that we're using, it's fucking Terminator, it's yeah Skynet, you know? And I remember Barry Crimmins was a friend of mine. Everybody knows who Barry was. I love Absolutely. him. Absolutely. He had the greatest single joke in the history of America, in my opinion. Somebody yelled at him, well, if you fucking hate America so much, why don't you leave it? And he goes, well, because I don't want to be a victim of its foreign policy. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. But what, wow. a, what a devastating thing to say. You yeah, know? that's um, true. And true, because we do, we are, look, everybody, I fucking hate how much hate there is towards immigrants in this country. Because it's like, mm. first of all, I traveled thousands of miles from the border of Canada to the border of Mexico to make money in the 80s. Because... Buffalo was dying, you know, and it's bounced back. But we destroy any kind of decent government in South America with the CIA and with our foreign policy and with everything we do. And they go, gee, why do all these people want to come up here? Well, because we fucking turn their country into a drug gun capital. All the guns in Mexico come from the United States. And same with Chicago. Well, there's fucking so many guns. It's like, yeah, they're all from, you know, Pencil talkie in Indiana and all these other <laughs> fucking shitholes around it. So no right. matter what the gun law is, it doesn't matter. We're we're all we're stuck in a boat and it's like everybody except these people have guns. And it's like, well, at least I don't have a gun. It's like, yeah, but there's six other guns pointed at you. So, you know, it doesn't really yeah. matter, does it? Exactly. And the craziest thing is like how many fucking times you have to explain to people where the gun comes from in, in Chicago. Like the Chicago argument. It's insane to me. How is that still a fucking point that people get to argue anymore? How much do you have to put out? How much information do you have to put out before it's just enough? Like, yeah, it, it's, it's just, like, it's endless. We only poison the well at the top of the water. 
So the rest of the water, should, it's like this, America's like this big poison well. It doesn't matter. By the way, nobody checks your car. Nobody checks your trailer. Nobody checks shit. Right. Going from state to state to state to state. You can bring guns anywhere you want. Don't mm -hmm. try to bring a fucking apple from Arizona <laughs> to California. Right. They're so far up your shit. If you bring an apple or a banana, <laughs> where's that banana from? A banana! And they pull out a razor and a gun. Yeah. It's a banana! <laughs> you know, how insane is that? It is. That's, it. That's the old fucking joke. You can get Sudafed. You know, you can't get Sudafed as easy as you can get a fucking shotgun or a, a rifle. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's and, and that's the thing that kind of drives us down as a fucking country because everybody else knows it. Everybody around us knows it. And we're the only ones who like pretend like it's not even fucking happening. And it's infuriating. Do you think that there's like, so, uh, you know, I've had conversations with people before about like, if we can rest now, which I, I think is insane <laughs> to me. You know, yeah, exactly. Right. It's just that it's the I, I have close friends who don't like I think they started to dabble in politics when Trump was in office because it was easy. Right. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah, that's some surfacey shit, though. Because yeah, you know, I'm like that. Yeah. Look, and that's you know, I'll drop another name. Eddie Pepitone and I are friends. You know, I love Eddie Pepitone. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a fucking genius. And yep. when I'm around him, I just shut my mouth because everything. But you know, and when I when you say I'm left, man, I have friends who are way further left than me. <laughs> and, it's, it's like it's insane because I said the hangover that's coming for Biden. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. My it's going to be the fucking day after Christmas when you go, well, now what? Yep. You know, <laughs> it's like the candidate at the end when Robert Redford goes, what What now? Yeah. It's, OK, sure. And by the way, it didn't get past me that he goes, basically, nothing's going to change. It's like, oh, so we just don't have an asshole on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, policy, fucking big business, corporations. Although yeah. I, do, I, I am hopeful that he he at least talks about unions because I think unions, yes, and the destruction of unions and the fucking one percent and the corporations and the money that control everything right now. I, I mean, here's what happened though: it's Bill Clinton that fucked us, really, because mm -hmm. and NAFTA fucked us. Yeah. What he did was basically, and I think it was under his watch, is that he said, look, we can get two bucks from every guy in a union, or we can just get a hundred from Pfizer and make one phone call. And right. so they, they tried to do what the Republicans were doing. was like, we'll just be big business. And it's yeah. like, we'll just get the money from big business. Fuck students. Fuck seniors. Fuck old people. For, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fuck the unions. Fuck workers. And it's like, well, now you know why you lost. Because- yep. You you fucked your base, and by the way, Republicans can never win anyways. But they've set it up in a way that they always could win, right? Because you know the Supreme Court is bent yep. to them. Citizens United is bent to them. Gerrymandering. See, that's the Tea Party thing. That's what we were, you know, as Democrats. And I don't know that I mean, uh, you know, Democrats. Whatever. Two parties are. Fun. I know what you mean. Yeah. It's good cop, bad cop, and they trade mm -hmm. roles every administration. So right. you know, you can't really trust any of them. You no. know. What I mean? There are certain people I love. I, I notice so much Democratic hate for AOC. It's hysterical mm -hmm. to me. And yeah. I'm like, wait, you're, wait, what? You're a Democrat? Yeah. You know. I know. It, 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 that that drives me crazy. AOC, Ilan Omar. I do, the, the one thing that does provide me a semblance of hope is like kind of the, the people that have come uh, uh, after Bernie a little bit, the people that he helped elect, endorsed. I followed nearly everybody that he endorsed. And when they won, it was even better because I needed that kind of net buffer network for myself to go, okay, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see we were heading in any particularly positive direction. Because what they, I think, you know, between Trump, if you're looking for a silver lining between the last four years, if you can find one, uh, it's that there literally was a veil ripped off from the time, you know, from 2016 when he got elected to how the Democrats treated Bernie and how they treat any semblance of getting poor people money and health care, any of that shit, and then how the media reacts, and then the entire four-year span of Trump to what they did this time around. It's, it's, it's kind of opened, I think, a lot of people's eyes to, like, they don't care. And I think that's well, yeah, that's sad, but good. The liberal media, I'm like, fucking where's the liberal media? <laughs> you know, where, exactly. That, there is no such thing. It's right. Because like, my idea of liberal is, obviously, it's 
it's Chris Hedges and yeah. it's Noam Chomsky. That to me is liberal. There's no yeah. liberal fucking media. No. And and it's so funny when they throw that word around. I mean, and yeah. Bernie, you know, oh my God, this is what happened that week when we couldn't get fifteen dollars an hour. I was like, yeah, because we were fucking bombing Syria. So we had the right. money to bomb Syria. Uh, oh, but you know, we spent all the money on bombing Syria. You guys, let's we'll get you next year. It's heard yeah. to me. Uh, Robert Reich is another guy who nails it every now and then in the sense that he puts it in such brilliant, simple terms because it's hard. To, it's hard to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, what he said was, if the minimum wage had kept pace with CEOs, it would be forty four dollars an hour right now. Right. That would wow. be what every average worker. And by the way, <laughs> you know, I make sick sort of jokes. One of the sick jokes I made mm -hmm. was, you know. Uh, I read that millennials are disappointed at two out of their three jobs, you know? <laughs> and it's like, why are they so, and by the way, it's hysterical to me that all these generations blame millennials. It's like, we have fucked them so completely out of mm -hmm. any sort of hope. The only thing that's cool for them is that they don't give a shit. Yeah. They are the, the vaguely the nephews or the children of the Nirvana age, which is like, Oh, fuck it. You know, yeah. we're not going to own a bunch of shit. We're not going to be buried under a house that you'll just take away from us when we get cancer anyway. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Fuck, <laughs> you, fuck your house. Fuck your society. Fuck the banks. We don't mm. want to own anything. And fuck you. And yeah. so not all of them, but a lot of them have come to that grip where they're like, right. nah, they, they seem, a lot of them seem to rather want experience than materials. The, yes. the, the materialism of the Reagan shit and then even the nineties, just rampant, grotesque fucking materialism. Yeah. You know, I am so like terrified of America right now in the sense that, uh, you know, what people don't understand Walmart was the Borg. I've seen Walmart move into areas. They kill mom and pop stores. They kill the tax base, which means your schools are fucked, which means mm -hmm. your education isn't good, which means your roads aren't good because they don't pay the taxes that the mom and pops pay because they're a big corporate shithole. And now you extrapolate that into a national stage, which is Amazon. And right. Amazon does the exact same thing. And they move their warehouses into the poorest neighborhoods and they destroy them. And the, the cancer rates from factories spewing shit probably will go up mm -hmm. you know and you know amazon's the board too because amazon's going to kill walmart yeah so it's it's almost like some sick you know the megalodon eating the great white which just ate the it's like we're going to have you know we're going to have skynet we're going to have one big company the one big company fucking store right that's what's going to happen and you got fucking Elon Musk convincing everybody that he's going to have a place for them in Mars when they're just going to wind up being there in his indentured fucking servants. You know what I mean? It's it, it's yeah. it, no there's nobody looking out. That's the thing that's it's almost freeing. It's frightening, but it's almost freeing because it's like there's nobody looking out for us. And then at the same time, we're just kind of like, well, then I guess it's up to me. You know what I mean? Like it gives yeah. you a sense of like it's up to me then. And that's that's fine. I'm fine with that because like I, I always wonder how people keep their idealism because even when i was watching uh you know you know like the media kind of shit on bernie i don't know if you saw this i keep asking people about this i have a screenshot of it uh he was in the lead and cnn some idiot was on there talking about the whole thing and on the bottom of the feed it said the banner it said bernie sanders or coronavirus can either be stopped and i was like Jeez. Are you fucking kidding? Like, like, and people don't want to believe that it's being, that they're being manipulated, that, that they're being fed this kind of like, of course, that's where older people are scared shitless of it. But how do you keep your idealism? Cause it's you like Eddie, you, um, you know, Barry Crimmins at least had it too. And I know like, like even when I see guys like Dick Van Dyke, you know what I mean? Who are just yeah. constantly giving out money and, and, you know, he just, you know, and, and supporting Bernie, Danny, like, how do you do it? Well, there's only the fight. That's the only thing there is. And, you know, it's like I, you know, I I actually got to meet Bernie like wow. in a setting here in L.A. And I fucking loved him and I loved him out of the gate and I knew mm -hmm. he was telling the truth. I never understood how those, you know, thousands and thousands of people would flock to him. Yeah. And yet in primaries. And by the way, who was worse saying he was a communist? Democrats or Republicans? Oh, Democrat. Yeah, absolutely. 
because that's the they use the same shit, the same fear that Republicans were laying at them. And that was the one thing when Trump goes, poor Bernie, poor Bernie, going to mm-hmm. get screwed again. Yeah. Look at them. Look at what they're doing. And it's like, well, he's right. He was yeah, right. he is right. And, uh-huh. and, the, and the crazy thing is, is Trump still ran against Biden and Kamala as if he was running against Bernie. Yeah, because I know. that's like, what they, the only thing they were afraid of is well, the idea that people were going to get taken care of and socialism. Yeah. And that's all they had. Socialism. That was the other thing that made me laugh about Kamala Harris. They're like, um, she's a total, you know, stoner uh, liberal who's a cop. And I was like, well, what, you know, wait a second. You're going to you're going to have to pick one, guys. You can't. <laughs> That messaging, <laughs> that's bad messaging. Yeah. So Kamala is all things to all people. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> gotta, we need a little focus here. Yep. Um, yeah, it was, we met with Bernie, and I was just lucky enough to be, even be asked into this group. And wow. I, I'd, this was some time before the Biden election, mm-hmm. and he had, you know, he had clearly uh, – not made it through the primary in 16 because by the way that's that was the biggest mistake the democrats ever made was having a coronation for you know benghazi because they were like hey hey uh, we're gonna run this one and they go right. great got two years to completely shit on her and so what can we do well benghazi you know which is hysterical because half a million people died i don't give a shit but the foreign benghazi how dare you ma'am right. so, all right whatever okay right I don't, you know, it's not like I want to, def- I don't want to be in the position to have to fucking defend Hillary Clinton. However, yeah. So Bernie uh, came and met with a bunch of us and it's on the West side of LA and it's all fucking showbiz people. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how I got in the room because clearly I should not be allowed in the room. So, um, <laughs> and, I, and Bernie comes in and he goes, he goes, I just got back. I spent two months. In West Virginia, I was with the coal miners in a red state. And until you people, you coastal elites, start to give a shit about their votes and those people, you can't win elections. <laughs> I was wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. You don't give a shit. No. That guy don't give a shit. And, and I was so, like, happy that he didn't become someone else in that room. Right. You know what I mean? Because I've known enough fucking politicians and I've seen enough famous people. Yeah. And he goes, please be the same person. Please be yes. genuine. And he was. Yeah. And you know what's crazy, too, is they tried to use this against him at one point. And I thought that th- th- there was a video of him talking about how he doesn't give a shit about people's birthdays. And they really tried to run it as like, as like this guy won't say happy birthday to you. But, the, but what he was saying in the video is, I'm not going to, he goes, if it's a celebrity's birthday, I'm not going to call you for your birthday. I don't. I have things to do, and I'm not gonna make a TikTok video to say happy birthday to Kanye. You know what I mean? And I was like, I was like who doesn't want this guy? Like, I, it's, I love him. I yeah. always love him. Same. I I bought the ticket. I bought the T-shirt. I bought the ride. I was all in. Me too, dude. It's I the have, only. Poli- I don't have a lot of political. I, I don't do that. I'm not one of those guys. But oh, can you see it? I've got the. Um, uh, I don't know if it's going to come up. There we no, go. I see it. Not, not me. me it's it's the only brilliant, brilliant slogan too. Yes. And it really was him. Mm-hmm. I, I have the birdie bumper stickers. Nice. Because that bird moment was just fucking amazing to me. Right. And. It was not about the bird. It was about the look of joy and wonderment on his face. Yes. You know, and people go, oh, that's a cult of personality. I go, well, you could have a lot worse cult of personalities than yeah. following a guy who wants everybody to live above the fucking poverty level. Yeah. You know? And the crazy thing is, is, I mean, you know, you couldn't ask. Or, so that's what drove me crazy. And I was hoping everybody would realize it in 2016. And they fucking didn't because the same people fell for Biden's bullshit. Like, like even before, like even during the primary, they were like, I think I might be voting for Biden or the other. And I'm like, are you at like Klobuchar, that fucking useless? Like, you know what I mean? I was just like, that's insane to me. But like, it, that's the Bernie's the one dude that if you go back, everything he said, everything he's done, consistent, fought yeah. for gay rights, fought for civil rights protesting getting arrested and protesting handcuffing himself to with other people to other estat like i mean that is who the democrats are supposed to be and they fail fucking miserably and yet people still buy into it but that's the thing it's like if you don't i was when hillary lost i had no i i had said it a year before mm-hmm. here's why you're gonna lose mm. 
And what's funny is it came back up on my Facebook timeline because I thought, did I, did I write that? And I did. And I nice. predicted what was going to happen because I said, when you abandon the middle class, when you abandon students, when you don't give a shit about seniors, when you abandon workers and unions, mm -hmm. you no longer have your base. Right. It didn't matter that it was a razor thin margin. That was not the point. Mm -hmm. The point was you can't win without your base and wow. you betrayed your base. So, and don't say it's Hillary. Yeah. Flawed candidate. Not great. A lot sure. of people hated her, but that wasn't really the point. The point right. was it couldn't have even been close. Right. Exactly. And I kept making the comparison and the analogy to the gun argument. Every time there's a mass shooting, Republicans always do the now is not the time. Well, guess what? We lost to Trump in 2016, right? And, and we, when we tried to analyze how it happened, they were like, now is not the time. We got to, now is not the time no, to shit on. And then they did the same thing when they were talking about going back to normal and how close, like no one wants to acknowledge how close that, like if it wasn't for the fact that Trump supporters were dumb enough to listen to him by not voting by mail, he would have won handedly. Yeah. Like, and nobody wants to talk. And people are like, now is not the time we're moving. And I'm like, when is the time, Democrats? Because if you're not going to learn from your fucking mistakes, the next guy's not going to tweet. No, they don't want, you know, they don't like progressive voices. They don't mm. like being criticized. They've become the Republicans of the 60s. And right. They're just as authoritarian. They're just as don't tell us what to do. And, hey, we mm -hmm. got this. You know, the progressives of the Tea Party, if they don't understand that they got them this time, I don't right. know how, but they did get them this time. They won't get them again mm -hmm. if there isn't a clear and present danger like the psychopath. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, again, Hillary should have won. Yep. For whatever reason, they picked a candidate that they that had been smeared for two years by Benghazi. They knew she was coming. That's why don't tell them who's coming. Don't, right. No political party should ever tell anybody who's – that's why you primary people. Right. You know? So they don't have the ammunition, so they can't store up ammo for two years. You yeah, know, they, they destroyed Hillary um, for two years, four yeah. years, really a lifetime if you think about it. But really hardcore, and they had just enough margins here and there. And by the way, it's not about look when Facebook gets paid in rubles. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, come on. I don't did did the Russians hack our machines? No, of course not. Did it make a difference? Everybody makes a difference. Every right. amount of money spent makes a difference somewhere. Right. And um, so I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next. Biden, I believe, said he's only going to be in there one time. I think so too. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping like he, he does have a decent amount of empathy. You know what I mean? I feel like over, like. Time has softened this guy losing his son, like all the other stuff. So there's a couple things I'm I'm still holding out for. You know, I'm I'm you know holding out for the college stuff, holding out for the death penalty thing. I'm holding out for, you know, uh, some kind of a decent minimum wage at some point in the next few years or whatever. But again, I I also feel like all that back to normal talk without anybody going, hey, normal is what got us Trump, yeah, right? Is is a problem? You know? Yeah, it is. It's like we were doing something terribly wrong ever since Reagan. Yeah. And I don't care which party it was. We've been doing it wrong ever since Reagan. Right. Letting corporations run wild, not taxing them, letting everything be, you know, they don't want regulations at all. Unless, yeah. unless you're a woman who's got a vagina. Um, you know, <laughs> so it's like, it's like everything we've been doing is wrong. Everything is right. this to this point. Um, and well, like when Barry Goldwater winds up being the, the voice of reason in that era, you know what I mean? Like he was the one who cautioned Reagan against, um, I think he was, I think he was the one no, who cautioned Reagan. It was Barry Goldwater who said, talked about, you get these evangelicals in here, we're fucked. Yes, exactly. And then, yeah. And so it's like, come on, you know, I mean, that's, that's exactly true. Yeah. He's a lunatic. I yeah. Mean, he was a lunatic, but he had the foresight to go, hey man, an Ike, you know, Ike's right. The fucking military industrial complex is going to own you assholes for the rest of your life if you let them. And we yep. let them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so you think fucking Eisenhower told you, and there was no really bigger, you know, general, smarter general, better general mm -hmm. than Eisenhower. And he warned us about this. And so it's like yeah. 50 plus percent. I don't even know the exact number. And so I won't say anything. 
when you give that much to your fucking military, you're an idiot. You're stupid. And we don't, we have to create wars to fight now. You know, nothing is, well, we always did really. World War II is the last one where we were like, well, clearly we have to support our allies. Right. Especially France, who basically granted us our independence Mm -hmm. by, by bankrolling us when we were fighting the British. Yeah. You know, and so we showed up for them. But really, it's like ever since then, somebody said, you know, I said today, Pat Robertson coming out and saying cops are racist and out of control. That's Walter Cronkite saying end Vietnam. Yeah. You know, that's like a wow, you know, yeah. That's a massive moment where you go, hey, you fucking guys, when you got Pat Robertson saying that they're, the cops are racist and violent and they need right. to be stopped. Game's over. Is, yeah, and isn't that kind of crazy? Same thing, like, like we were saying with Goldwater and Pat Robinson kind of thing. When when the crazies that we have in our community acknowledge other cra- – you're like, we got to – all right, we've gone too far. You know what I mean? Like it should be a real wake-up call. <laughs> it's, yeah. it, it is. It's so crazy. And then, you know, the crazy thing is too is like this pandemic – stuff i feel like should have you know uh i i'm hoping we come out of it without having had gone back in time you know what i mean to 2019 which everybody wants to get back to i don't know if i feel i i'm like i know we're inching toward it and i feel like uh, the powers that be have a stronger hold on it i don't know why i i feel like a little disheartened about the progress any progress we're making coming out of this pandemic the the, well i keep talking economically that this is going to be like a massive boom and, um, I hope so. you know, again, who knows? It's like, the, the, I don't, I really don't like the media. I love the guardian. Um, yeah. You know, guardian's good. Economist, but, uh, you know, Twitter, you know, I was so outraged. Because I had to, <laughs> like, look every day for the last fucking week, I go to Twitter and it's about Prince Philip. And I'm like, fuck you guys. Do you I know, know. How that, I hate the monarchy. It's, and people are like, oh, because your great grandfather came from Ireland? Yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. When do you go, it's a genocide? It's, you know, it's a genocide. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Like, who at some point hasn't had a genocide? I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. The troubles and everything, I do fucking blame them. Yeah. They, they kill everybody on the island. Right. If they were just doing it passively. You know? <laughs> it's a passive genocide. Right. Like, Unless you were in the stadium when they drove the tank in and shot everybody. But mostly it was a passive suicide on the part of the English, who, right. by the way, is the worst fucking country in the history of the world. Oh, all right. Let's get into that, please. Well, yeah. I, you know, these are the people that said, oh, America, America. So you have slavery. Right. You guys have slavery. It's like, no, you enslaved nations, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You yeah. actually enslaved entire countries. And so when you say we let go of slavery before you, no, 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 no. You created the fucking plantation. Yeah, exactly. You had the blueprints. Right. And so, you know, and that was another thing that occurred to me, really upsetting part of America. You know the difference between a concentration camp and a plantation? You can't have your wedding at a concentration camp. Okay. Oh. So fucking come on. Wow. Wow. Come that's great. On. Yeah. It, Good point. Like, what are we, we? You can't host a cooking show with a, right. uh, <laughs> you know, at a plantation or, yeah, that's true, dude. Yeah. So, you know, and yeah. All right. Am I radical? I don't even uh, think I'm radical. No. I, I don't think I'm radical at all. I think I look at things and I see them fairly clearly. Right. Through a, a really sort of obvious um, looking glass. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. And I feel like over the years, it's been, considered radical because uh people have been trying to just keep a hold of their money you know what i mean and their power and so they're like we're just gonna call these people fucking crazy and convince people who don't know any better that they should feel this way that they should be working until they're dead and that they should be fucking you know living in you know squalor or whatever to to make ends meet and it's insane we have uh the highest mortality rate and the highest cost of health care of all the civilized sort of vaguely wow. civil. I don't even know what the fuck that means. But right. Of all the countries with a certain, you know, gross national product, ours is the worst. And you think that also 
that was Nixon. When you made healthcare a profit business, it's over. Yeah. You know, it's your EpiPen's 800 bucks. It's, it's absurd. And when you won't, and the, they're so powerful, you can't even buy your fucking drugs from Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's the exact same drug. And yeah. So, you know, this country fucking needs an enema, to quote the Joker. <laughs> it, really, I mean, it, it needs something completely radical to happen. And, and really, everything that's happening now is just a stopgap, you know. Did you think that this was going to be when you saw, I mean, because I, I got a little, you know, um, hopeful about, like, again, like looking at silver linings, like the pandemic in general to me. Um, and then, you know, all these protests and stuff that happened after the George Floyd thing. I thought, you know what, if you look at it positively, um, the pandemic gave everybody the time to finally see things crystal clear. And that's why you saw so many people in every fucking state out marching because they're not we're not we're not bombarded by fucking work and obligatory nonsense just to survive we actually got a glimpse of what was going on around us and decided to do something about it i had hope that it was going to keep going well i i think it will but i think what people have realized here's the problem is uh, getting back to the tea party um mm -hmm. republicans absorbed the tea party because they knew they had to and democrats right. have shit on progressives and really dismissed them Mm -hmm. And it's like they just are completely mortgaging their future. Yeah. Because if you don't keep the progressives inside the wing, if you keep shitting on ANC, AOC from above, by the way, here's my hope. Everybody's mm. so focused on AOC. Katie Porter is going to fucking eat your lunch. Oh, my God. You're absolutely right, man. I 100% I, I agree. Nobody's paying attention to her. It's like you should be afraid yep. of her. Yeah. When she gets in. She's like a young, a younger, more, you know, sort of brilliant version of what might have been, you know, Elizabeth Warren. Right. Who, who had too much. She, but I loved Elizabeth Warren in the sense that she said the right things. She went after the right people. People were like, well, yeah. she's be a lawyer. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, exactly. She's been a lawyer in Washington. Right. Well, the other thing that I loved, painting with the same brush. Look at Bernie. He's a loser. He doesn't have any money. And then they go, who owns two houses, Mr. Socialist? <laughs> it's like, fuck you. And fuck yeah. you. you know, it's. Yep. <laughs> oh it's insane. God. It's absurd. They, it is. And their people eat it the fuck up, too, because they don't even they don't even notice it. They just transition into that stuff so smoothly. Liz Warren, I did like Liz Warren and Bernie. I was I, I liked a lot. And then she I don't know what happened to her towards the end. I don't know what your opinions are of that, but. I don't know if Obama made some, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I'd love to know because she made a quick, like when she started to um, uh, make uh, compromises before she was anywhere near being elected with healthcare, I was like, I'm out. You know what I mean? Well, like they, when you, but what you said earlier is now's not the time. That's what happened to everybody. They right. were like, look, unless you want Bernie, you fucking guys got to bail. And it right. didn't matter who it was. They were like, well, this is this is the horse. It was a shorter coronation, so they couldn't load all their guns. You know, right. but it's the exact same thing. Uh, Buttigieg, Warren, Klobuchar. By the way, and they also knew we can't win without Kamala because she was the only right. one left. And by the way, I was kind of surprised that Biden picked the person who just handed him his ass. I, a dude, I thought that too, and I didn't under. I, first of all, just read the fucking room too. You know what I mean? Like, it, like the the entire conflict with the police, and then you hire somebody. Which again, I don't understand it. People made really good points. Even even like uh, who turned out to be bad shit. I guess I don't even know. But Tulsi Gabbard kind of handed Kamala her ass during that debate, laid it all down on the line, and still doesn't matter. Whatever the Democrats want at this point, you know they wound up getting. But um. Yeah, that was that was really frustrating to see. Yeah, I was, but I was sort of surprised. But uh, and again, it's like it's almost like because you could say about Kamala Harris, oh, she's a stoner and she's a cop, right? Hated everything. Yeah, you know, it's the same with Biden. Nothing's going to change. He's a socialist. It's like, well, no, he's a yeah. senator. 
He's the definition of a centrist. You know what's and, annoying too is I'm so tired of being trying to like trying to condemn to convince us I'm supposed to be impressed by mediocrity. That's kind of what it is at this point. I'm like, I, why am I supposed to be impressed by Kamala's debate performance? I don't know. I wasn't blown away. Every other candidate had way more to say when they were talking about anybody else. Did you know? I mean, well, I, I, you know, they don't need California either. California is so blue, right? You know? But I really felt like she was. Look, the the Democrats, if they don't hang on to the black vote, they're finished. Right. They're yes. just. But the black vote is also people make racist sort of assumptions. Mm -hmm. about, you know, who they support. I mean, statistically, yes, this is who they supported. But, you know, I can remember when Trump won and I, you know, I was clearly like, that was fucked up. I yeah. just couldn't believe it. Right. And I just, and I grew up in New York, so I knew what a fuck stick he was. And I was yep. like, wow. And he represented everything <laughs> when you talk about liberal elites or coastal elites or elites or one percenters. It's like, that's who that it's all fake, but that's who that guy is. <laughs> right, so right. I called a friend of mine that day, um, Faison Love, who I've been friends with for God knows how many oh, nice. years. We, he was 16, and I think I was 19 or 20, and mm -hmm. we couldn't go in the comedy store. And I've, I've talked about Faye a lot. Right. <laughs> I called him up the day after the election. I go, what the fuck? What the fuck? Mm -hmm. He goes, yeah, I don't care. I go, <laughs> what? He goes, Mark, oh, what am I supposed to be? Oh, no, I hope things don't get bad in America for black people now. <laughs> the day after the election, that's what he said. And I was like, yeah, all right. Yep. You know, and so, you know, assuming anything about any group of people or, you know, sure, there's margins, there's statistics, right. there's percentages. But it's like, you don't fucking know. It's like right. the, the bike shop. She's selling electric bikes and she's a Trumper. Yeah, you know? exactly. So Good point. Right. it's a varied country. Everybody has a different opinion about you will find anybody in any group. I'm always the log cabin Republicans. I'm like, OK. Yeah. And and the thing is, too, is like I feel I, I'm, I'm still stunned, like, you know, there's varied groups in the in the country and everything like that. And I know that a lot of them voted for Trump. But I think, you know, I think it would have swayed to Sanders because I think he spoke their language, too. They were hurting. They needed help. It yeah. was a clear it was a clear that the last four years, Trump didn't give a shit. By that point, he had lost a decent amount of. But when presented with another traditional fucking Democrat who, you know, it was fear, seem to be the fear worked inside the Democratic Party, that same fear. Yeah. Trump winning was the same fear that that Bernie didn't get it. And I, uh, you know what? I'm not a conspiracy guy. I'm really not. Mm. But the amount of people that went to his rallies were right. stunning to me. Uh, it was, you know, okay. A lot of fear went into people voting in key areas to go, uh, um, uh, we got to win. I agree. And I know. So that's why I think, uh, and you know, I do think Biden has learned a lot of stuff over that career, you know, yes. I, you know, and, my big problem with Biden was, um, you know, the the busing thing. Yeah. But he has changed. Yeah. I, I can believe he has changed. But also, um, I was I watched what he did to Anita Hill, and I was not happy. Right. Exactly. And, that, and, and that was, that's also why he had to pick Kamala Harris. Yes. I, I agree with that, too. And, like, there's – I'm not a big fan of eating your own. You know what I mean? Like that there's there's way too much nonsense and bullshit with that going on. But I'm also not a fan of the way it was handled. Like if you're going to fucking put other people on a cross too, when it comes time to do you, you better do the same thing. Well, no, that's like I said some shit about Como because I was like, oh, yeah. You know, when Co my friends who, you know, I'm from New York, my friends mm -hmm. act so hard because I said, hey, uh, you know, if the New York Post is looking, I think Como Nomo might be a good headline. And right. everybody was like, this is dangerous for you to say that. And I was like, oh, okay. So uh, I believe some women. Right, <laughs> right. And they fucking hate that. And I don't care. Right. I don't care. Right. If, if it's like, w uh, look, I, I do believe women. I'm sorry. Yeah. Who the fuck destroys their life. There's no money there for them. 
Right. They're just coming out and telling their story. And I've seen what women have to go through to tell that fucking story. So no, like, I, I assume they're telling the truth. Right. And the crazy thing is, is like Cuomo's, I mean, up, up until this point, it was the same thing. It was like Rudy Giuliani almost. We're like, that guy was a piece of shit. And then 9-11 happened and he was the mayor of the fucking year. Right. Or whatever. And then he continued it back to being a piece of shit and ab absolutely crazy. Cuomo was, wasn't a fuck. Like nobody liked him. He was a piece of shit before this. And then, you know, COVID happened. He stood up to Trump, all that kind of crap. And I kind of took a little bit of joy in everybody doing the Cuomo sexual thing, like all the whatever, because I was like, yeah, you fucking more, you know, like, that's what you get when you don't pay attention to politics at all is you do that shit. And then you've got to retract it immediately. Yeah, it was, um, I, I was just like, whatever. And plus, you know, the, the, my red friends in New York fucking hate him. Yeah. And so I was like, well, now you pissed the left off. <laughs> the red already hated you so much. Right. You only have to piss off this many lefties in that state. Yeah. And people are like, yeah, a Republican's going to win. And I'm like, look, I, I don't know how that's really true because I think the lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. I mean, isn't it a Democrat? Yeah. And so she would finish out the term and they're saying, well, she can't win against. And I'm like, look, you can't just go. Well, we're going to keep Harvey Weinstein because, geez, he makes good movies. <laughs> you know, they're good movies. Right. So let's not let's not overreact. It's like, no. Right. We cannot be them or it's, we lose. That's true, too. But you know what's funny to me is when they make those arguments for the smaller positions in government, we can't possibly switch this guy out. In the meantime, every four years, the most powerful person in the world gets changed. So I'm like, <laughs> you can totally remove a governor. Like it's insane. Yeah. You know, it's it's no. all just it's all just fucking. Where where are you from in New York, by the way? I'm from uh, Buffalo. I was born in Buffalo. Buffalo, New York. Okay. Yeah. I was born in Brooklyn. All right. Well, you know, my friend Eddie, not Pepitone, another Eddie. Mm. He, everything above 110th Street is up. So. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. That's all. Do you, do you miss being in, I mean, I know you were in the California you're talking about. I wish I had talked to you, by the way, before I moved, I moved out to California for a couple of years and uh, I did not know that there were pockets of red. And oh. I, my first place there was renting a room in Downey oh. with a, yeah, didn't know, buddy. Did not know fucking clue. And the guy that rented the room was total NRA member. Yeah. Would would uh, one day he walked into his backyard and shot a bird that was making too much noise on the wall, and I was like in my fucking room on an air mattress because I wasn't making any yeah. money at all. But I was, you know, what I mean, where I was just like, "What the fuck was that?" And he just came back in. He was like, "How to get that fucker to shut up?" And I was like, "I'm gonna move." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, by the way, that's completely illegal. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. I was like, you know? uh, okay. And then I found out, like. One on like all his buddies were Trump supporters and stuff, and like they were trying to get me to join this lodge. And I was like, This is culty, I'm not into this shit. I just would, I would come in, go into my room, close the door, pray he'd turn on the AC, which he wouldn't, and then you know, hope for either death or a uh, success. Neither, neither came by the way. Uh, that, well, <laughs> that really has the makings of a great horror movie, by the way, you know, <laughs> that would be amazing. Like, like you, you get a guest house at, at like the tremors couple with the bazookas and the, oh, and the Trump thing. And you're just like, Hey man, I'm just like, I don't, you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is like, especially around that time, I mean, my Facebook and regardless of, you know, what I was pitching when I was in LA or whatever, I didn't care. I, everybody, I, I had my politics right out in the front. So I was like, this guy's going to fucking see, like, I was like sleeping sometimes and I'm like, he's going to see my fucking feed. <laughs> like, and I might not, win. I was like, what the fuck? But I, I think it, yeah, I left, you know, pretty short. I, that didn't last long. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, all I know about Downey is that you could pee and get gas there. That's it. <laughs> That's like, if I'm going to San Diego, I'm leaving LA. I've been sitting on the freeway for two hours. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to pee in Downey. <laughs> Um, so that's really all you should do there. Oh, and I think yeah. Karen Carpenter's from Downey, and then that's it. That but was it. I was like, oh, cool. She starved herself to death, probably. <laughs> I was like, not a bad idea.
He's the Bobby Sands of pop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, Bobby. I was thinking Bobby Seal. No, it's Bobby. No, Sands. Bobby Sands. IRA. You know. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing was, is you know what's crazy to me though, too. These fucking rednecks, man. They they love like like all his song. Any anything he would play on the radio was like eighties Echo and the Bunny Men. Uh, fucking um. You know, uh, and Will, you know, loved all that shit. And I want to be like, how do you listen to that stuff, Zeppelin, and then wind up thinking that, like, wind up being a Trump? Like, it's insane to me. I'm like, you do know, like, if he listened to Ted Nugent, I'd get it. I'd be like, yeah, that that makes more sense to me. Yeah, to but, my fucking eternal shame, I had him on 70s before he was like, and that's somebody said this the other day about Ted Nugent and his tough guy image. It says, mm -hmm. please don't forget he shit his pants to not go to Vietnam. So, oh, I didn't know. I've never done that. That's true. He wow. Did. He he got a section. I don't know what they call it. Section right. eight. Section eight or something. To get out of Vietnam. Wow. Um, what I noticed that's really interesting. Back before, when Trump was running, some Bruce Springsteen was pretty. You know, not a lot, but he said enough about what a fuck stick this guy was, and yeah, going to be bad for America, and blah blah blah. And I quoted him, and some of my friend goes. Oh, yeah, I get all my political advice from the boss. I go, no, you get it from a fucking game show host, you nitwit. <laughs> right, exactly. You don't fucking tell me that yeah. Bruce Springsteen doesn't know more than Trump about how the country works and what's better and what's right. Better. You know, and that's yeah. like somebody was also, it's like, it's so amazing to me. Well, it's like they're so, they're literally, they're honestly very stupid people over there. Mm -hmm. When it's like, I'm not for Obamacare, I'm back in the ACA. Right. Uh, you know, and it's like somebody explained to him and he got teary because he's like, you're going to take my insurance. It's like, yes, you fucking nitwit. Yeah. It's like people that, that love. Oh my God. It was like, and somebody else was talking about this band, like, Oh, rage against the machine. Oh yeah. The fucking right wingers who love rage against the machine. And I'm like, you know, Zach, De La Roca would fucking hate you. Cause you're an idiot. <laughs> Oh, and somebody called out Tom. Is it Tom Morello? Yeah, Tom Morello. They said uh, they said some shit about yeah, you fucking guitar player from a rock band. That's who I want to talk politics with. Mm -hmm. And Tom, did you see what he said? No, what he say? He goes, well, it's. He said, you know, yeah, I can see that. It's not like you would assume that I have a uh, degree in poli sci from Harvard, although I do. <laughs> oh, nice. The internet is like the. I don't know if that's exactly what he said, but it was truly he did. Yeah, have an amazing fucking degree from somewhere because you know how political and how absolutely and has to be. Yeah, I saw there was another thing on Twitter. I forget the writer. I think it's Ed Solomon, and I think it was about Men in Black. And two people are talking about Men in Black going back and forth, and he weighs in on it. And they go, we fucking don't need your input on. And he goes, well, since I wrote the movie. <laughs> and it's like the internet is such a fucking wild west of stupidity. Yep. You know, it's just like, I don't know what's it's happened. A, it's it, No, it's like, you know what it is? It's weird. It's like an, a giant unchecked mental health issue, which I'm not even like, I've been, I've been through know. crazy bouts of depression, but it's, it's crazy to me that it's just, that it's not addressed in that way more often, because even when you've got like, uh, like, you know, like people always argue about cancel culture, right? And I've been in that debate and talked about that and stuff. But what I what I really wish people would get a hold of is that there's always four arguments when it comes to cancel culture. And one is that mixed into that is just putting rapists in jail, which is like not even like, I mean, it's just it's just dumb shit that's against the law. The other part of it is, um, you know, having the ability to speak out, you know, uh, uh, whatever, talking truth to power kind of thing. And the other shit is a middle ground that I think everybody gets frustrated with. And the middle ground is like, do you follow like the, what's going on with the Joss Whedon thing? I do. And I, okay. I, I've read about it and you know, he's, he's on the Catherine wheel. That's just, it's yeah. his turn, you know? Right. It, yeah, exactly. And so here's, but here's the funny thing about it. Like regardless of I don't what, what side anybody actually falls on, this is the thing I, I think crystallizes the argument people have with cancel culture is like, so the Buffy people, one of the actresses from Buffy came forward and said some shit about Joss Whedon, right? Am yeah. Amid like the justice league shit that was going on. 
And then um, Miss Sarah Michelle Geller decided to chime in, didn't give any details, but just was like, hey, look, I stand with, you know, I loved my time on the series. I stand with this particular actress. I can't think of her name. Um, right. And, you know, is it Charisma Carpenter. That's it. Yes. Charisma right. Carpenter. So yeah. like I stand with her or whatever. Yada, yada, yada. So one part of the Internet, which is always, by the way, which is just hilarious either way, is uh, uh, is like Sarah Michelle. Like she need, demanding Sarah give more details and like. The other and so the woke people are, and cancel culture fans are basically like she doesn't need to tell you shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like fuck that shit. She doesn't need to tell you anything. You just believe what she says. And then <laughs> and then Michelle Trachten. Oh no 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 Michelle Trachten. Michelle Trachtenberg. No no no. Uh, who is the one from American Pie? She's escaping me right now. Who was on um, How I Met Your Mother? Hilarious redhead. Oh, that's Hannigan. Hannigan. Yes. She was so, on seventies too. She was. Yeah, she was on that seventy show too. So she's amazing, right? I love, yeah. like, she's a great act, super funny. So she is is actually close friends with Joss Whedon. They, they, you know, photographed her. She has not said anything. So now the woke people, which is uh, the cancel, whatever, is like, is like, she needs to fucking speak up. And then they were also like, at the same time, unless she's got anything to say positive, which is that she can keep her fucking mouth. And I'm like, that's what people argue about. It's like, so Michelle doesn't have to say a fucking thing any more than this vague statement, but. Uh, Hannigan needs to speak up and it needs to be very, so it's like, I feel like the, but it's, but it's all like, when you look at the internet, it's all just people who are mentally unbalanced, unchecked, screaming because they hate their own lives half the time. And it's like, can the, can the people involved in it just talk? And then the rest of the nut jobs back off. That's like, that's like on Twitter at one point I got, I got, um, I'm assuming Gen Z people shitting on me because I had posted a thing about, uh, the first kiss mm. between, between two men on primetime television was Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Topher Grace on 70s. Right. And I said that, and they go, yeah, but that show is super homophobic. And I was like, okay, well, had you been around in the 70s, <laughs> I would tell you that it was fucking horrible. Right. I went to high school with people that could not be gay and I knew they were gay and we, you know, and it was like, it was like more like a Southern thing where it's like, well, it happens, but you don't want to mention it, you know? And that was like, right. everything was sort of, and then, so, but you know, I was thinking here's, I have like two jokes that really, I don't think there's, well, it's a switch. I guess it is a switch because I say, I like to confuse people and I really do. It's mm -hmm. like my main job, not even just to laugh. I want them to be confused mm -hmm. because I, I say, you know, I really think it's ridiculous that I, that it's against the law to talk about your religion at work. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't talk about my religion at work, how is anybody going to learn about the church of Satan? <laughs> and so, all right. Then people go, uh, because it's like everybody's thinking, and then they go, all right. The other joke that I fucking literally wrote probably two weeks ago that I did that actually worked. I, I did my first show in a year last week. Mm -hmm. The joke was, so everybody's so sensitive. Everybody's so woke. Mm -hmm. And you're all afraid. And you want to cancel Pepe Le Pew. And you want to cancel Dr. Seuss. Well, I got some real fucking bad news about the Bible. <laughs> Exactly. Well, we're going to get into content and what's upsetting. Well, yeah. And it's not, I'm not fucking anti religion. I'm really not. I have no feelings for any of them one way or the other. I yeah. don't. It's yeah. like, I, I kind of hate that Bill Maher is such a douchebag about it because it's like, I want, you know, a freedom is a freedom is a freedom. And anybody at any point, if you think, I think, what would Carlin or Lenny Bruce, how would they feel about any kind of, woke or cancel or anything right. it's like look you're allowed to say whatever i think you should be allowed to say whatever you want and then take the fucking blowback right yeah it, it is the, the the blowback should be i mean for comics it's always it's immediate blowback's immediate joy's immediate laughter is immediate i think comedians kind of understand that and to an extent handle it better than yeah. most people do um it, the, the crazy thing is, is like you said, it's like they come at it from a direction of, well, that 70s show is homophobe or whatever the hell it is, which is like 
do you even bother to fucking like if you're not going to bother to understand either the time period something was from the aim of the writer doing the, the piece of entertainment or the actors involved then shut the fuck up you know what i mean it's like i love part of the the, the so the parkland students i always think about this and i and i did a cartoon i, I draw sometimes whatever did a cartoon about it and i used to kind of do it on stage where it was like um you know we've always had uh, generations who've had great quotes or whatever and one of you know and it's uh Kennedy says, uh, ask not what you can do for your country. And then the other one is, you know, uh, there's nothing a fear except fear itself. And then Gen Z has, you know, uh, f uh, fight for our lives before, you know, before anybody else does or whatever. And I was like, and then the other part of Gen Z has friends is really problematic. And it's like, how, how do you have that gap in your generation where, you know, it's like, these kids are literally fighting for their lives. You know what I mean? They're going out there making, they're, they're talking to Congress at 19. And then the other half is in a corner going, you know, Ross was really not like, shut, come on, <laughs> come on. It was a show in the late nineties. Like, God well, damn. My, my friend went down a sex in the city rabbit hole. Oh God. And was like talking about it. And I realized, and you know, I fucking hate reboots. Fucking yeah. hate them. Because every time you reboot something, you just killed original content. Absolutely. And so, you know, I don't give a fuck about superheroes. I know they make money. I know some of them are amazing movies. Just don't I, look at my shirt. <laughs> look, I fucking, I, I saw, oh, who's the, the girl from woman from Game <laughs> of Thrones who played oh. Phoenix that was literally one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. One hundred percent, and it's um uh Sophie to uh Sophie something fuck I can't think of her name. She's married to a Jonas brother. Anyway, yeah, that was horrible. That was trash. Oh, it was like unreal, and I was so disappointed. And I thought, um, Captain America is one of the best things I'd ever seen, even yes. though I'm not jingoistic. However. If we could ever fight and win a war and you could get behind it, it'd be fucking that one. Yeah, so, agreed. And I love that movie and I love the sequel. And, you know, and so I do. There's some of them I really enjoy because they're written sort of brilliantly. Yeah. Well, that's you the know? thing. Like Kevin Feige has it, it, it's the perfect example of a guy who loves the material he's selling. Yeah. And it wouldn't work any other way. It doesn't work any other way because, you know, DC is complete and total garbage. And I'm not even like, like the Nolan trilogy for Batman was cool. That was yeah. good. They yeah. abandoned it for some reason and then went with whatever, like, I don't know. I, I don't know if you're friends with Zack Snyder, if you know him, I don't want to shit no, on him. And Okay, cool. Know. Well, then I'm going to shit on him. But so that, here's was, the that was also my joke. I'm waiting for the Zack Snyder vaccination. <laughs> 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 that's fantastic i but like and as as somebody who's a producer and you've been in this you know you created some things been in this business forever have you ever seen a director who has to go on every interview show and explain his fucking movie like dude you had not only did you have two hours to explain it you had a cut where it was four fucking hours and you're still explaining it like you had the shot get like it's insane no, I don't. I don't understand the industry. By the way, I always think it's funny. Director's cut. I will go. Well, who fucking edited it the first time? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Did the studio take the film away from you, and now it's <laughs> Alan Smithy. Are you doing an Alan Smithy on this shit? Right. Who the fuck cut it the first time. Exactly. So, I'm never. I know it's just a money grab, and it's like yeah. you know there was like four minutes that I didn't get, and they <laughs> upset me and. And I love when directors, I'm like, hey, fucker, the writer sometimes doesn't even get invited to the rap party. So right. don't tell me, yeah. you know, so, and yeah. I come from a writer and a producer place, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know what directors do. I know their purpose. I know that they're artists and yeah. we are maybe fucking worker bees because when you can take a script and have 12 writers write it, well, you know, your thumbprint's not really on that. Right, right, right. Um, somebody told me such a funny fucking story about Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. When they wrote Goodwill Hunting, mm -hmm. they put in an absurd uh, one-page thing where one of them blew the other one. <laughs> okay? They put it in there. And 
<laughs> they sent, and I, I don't know if this is true or not. They sent the movie out. Right. And only Miramax got back and said, I like it, but what's with the blowjob scene? Everybody else was like, yeah, we don't, you know, nobody mentioned the blowjob scene and they put it in there so they would know they actually read the movie. Wow. Because there's no way you could read it, get to the blowjob scene and go, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I and, just, the, and the irony that Harvey Weinstein would be the only one who acknowledged a blowjob scene. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's really, you know. That's fucking hilarious. Um, are you so are the so you're against reboots, which I totally agree. Um, and I'm not going to ask about that '70s show reboot, but was there any? Uh, yeah. Like that, I know, I know it's been tossed around. Everybody talks about it or whatever. Um, but uh, I feel like that one in particular would be so fucking hard to do, just because you know it was about the '70s. You know what I mean? Right, I'm going to go off on on fucking reboots because sure. I, I have, and I'm sure this is inappropriate. No. I'm going to go the Bill Burr road out, route on this. Just Do it. it. I grew up loving Kung Fu. Oh, yeah. That was my show. I loved Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. I, I felt there was like a certain brilliant kind of justice in that, even though more than Kung Fu, I love Bruce Lee, which, mm. you know, I worship Bruce Lee. And right. now you know Bruce Lee basically created Kung Fu and got fucked out of the credit. Right. He also got fucked out of the part. And mm -hmm. they bring in fucking Robert or uh, John Carradine. Absurd. Right. Nonetheless, I don't know any better. I'm like 12. And so I love <laughs> Kung Fu. I watch it. He kicks people's asses. But mm -hmm. what was great about it is he's a pacifist. Mm -hmm. That was really sort of the interesting thing. He right. walked through the West, no fucking shoes, just a stick. He didn't want to fight you, but oh my God, if you fought him, he right. was going to kick your ass. He's going to beat up four racist cowboys. I love that. Yeah. And they reboot Kung Fu, and it's a woman. She lives in San Francisco. She quit school to go train in a in a monastery. So there's the Dr. Strange Batman sort of thing happening there. And I was mm. just like, okay, well I'm going to reboot the Poseidon adventure, except it takes place in a van. <laughs> and, and uh, rather than the pe the passenger on the boats, it's the cast of cats. <laughs> and the van flips over into a ditch in Modesto and there's just some water going through. So that's like, <laughs> I'm going to reboot Little Rascals, except mm -hmm. it, it's all adults and they work in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely, I see what you're saying. I completely agree too. And also it's very lazy. It's, it's, it, that's like almost like lazy woke behavior, lazy feminism. Yes. Or like, like, <laughs> it, it, like, like write their, like write them a fucking new character for God's sake. Like I have no, like nobody has any problem giving, giving people different roles and all that other shit, but you know, it's like so. This is going to be a nerd thing in a second, but like so, they they um, you know, they have the Miles Morales Spider Man. He's like the um, half black, half Hispanic Spider Man. He's yeah. a kid. The whole thing is about a different dimension, which I am like. It's it, yeah. It, go the, for the, it. Do, do okay, that, cool. You know? Yeah. The <laughs> thing about that is, is like, give make a new fucking character. I have no prop. Like, yeah, I you know, Sp I'm not saying Spider Man has to be, but there's a guy. There's a character who's been around for what sixty fucking years. You know his backstory. You know everything that's about him. And what happens is, and I was talking to my friends about this at one point too, who are like, you know, I have friends who are like wind up being overly woke because they're just, they don't know what to, you know, in general. So they're just like, no, it's totally fine. But I'm like, you know, what's going to happen to this character is they're going to default to the original Spider-Man. That thing's going to fall by the wayside. And what fucking happened? They, they killed off his comic book. He's now mixed in with the same universe. You know what I mean? Because those things don't hold up. It's not woke if you're lazy about it. you know it's not progressive or or any progress if you're like fine we'll just we'll just make a, a similar character and he's black it's over done it's, we did uh, it it's super sweaty and obvious it's yeah like, yeah uh, I, I you know at some point here's my here's my Spider-Man pitch he mm -hmm. kills Uncle Ben himself <laughs> not realizing he has a split personality <laughs> so he's Spider-Man. But he's also Peter Parker, but he's also a thief who killed Uncle Ben. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> hey, no, you do it. I'll do it. Let's do it. Yeah, that's like I'm rebooting. No, I know what you mean. I'm gonna reboot Sesame Street, but 
but it takes place in a prison for zombies. <laughs> and 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 Kermit is actually a lizard. <laughs> so it's just gonna be. I'm just. I went into a rabbit hole last night about reboots. That was like it's it's Dikembe Mutombo and Rudolf Nureyev as Cagney and Lacey, but they're not cops. They're estheticians. Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. They just yeah. I mean, I really did. I went into a rabbit hole of because I it started with the Equalizer hmm. when I was like Wilford Brimley is I Carly. <laughs> 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 What I, do you do? I really wish you had your own network and this is what you put on there. <laughs> like, I will invest in this. This is amazing. Adult Swim would be the only place that would actually even listen to these. Oh, God. That's so, so true. That's so true. fucking funny. Oh, God. Yeah. It gets a little nauseating because they're all like, you know what's crazy? The only reboot I saw, and this is almost blasphemous. Is that I thought did a good job was when Roseanne was on hers. I don't know, I, and it's because they got the original writers, though. You know what I mean? It wasn't like because the other reboots I saw from other shows that came back out of the fucking woodwork, they didn't have the characters' age. You know, they were in the same shitty situation dating, and I was like, they have that. They, we, they've been gone for thirty years. Fucking make them change somehow. You know? No, like, yeah, I know. Well, but they, the Roseanne people, I think, picked it up. I don't know. They they seem to know what to, and I guess it's because they had the original writers. Yeah, I don't know if it was the original writers. I know it was Tom. I'm sure it was some of them. And um, didn't Norm come back? Norm McDonald? Did he come back for it? Maybe. Okay. You know, I mean, um, but you know, I mean, rebooting '70s is is to me. Oh, that was the other thing. We, yeah. Reboot. Um, <laughs> fuck. It's like rebooting All in the Family to me. Mm. You know, you're not. And I know people have tried and no, yeah. no, done stuff similar or whatever. Right. But so, and I, I've honestly, there was a conversation that uh, Brian uh, Moore and Chris Peterson, who were two of the original producers of the seventies mm -hmm. and Topher Grace hung out for a couple of days working on a concept. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't, I've been asked, would you reboot seventies? And I, the answer is no. And, no matter what, I just don't see it and I don't want to be a part of it. And dear God, it was 20 fucking years ago. Right. And, and I'm, I don't like reboots and I certainly don't like one that had movie stars in the cast that will never come back. Right. They will come back and do it. And so that was sort of the thing. I was going the Larry Sanders route where Topher was going to play me again, creating a show for children, teenagers, and how fucking. You know, and it was just like, because he and I went through a lot of shit together. Mm -hmm. And we both sort of had to prove ourselves to a lot of people because we were both completely untested. And that's sort right. of an interesting story. And that was the story I said, look, if you want to do a single camera right. from whole cloth and you play me again, I'm all in. That's, that's a great that's, idea. It's a new show, though. It was. It would be a new show. It wouldn't be, it would be, again, it would be, technically sort of my life but it was also be his life too at 19 yeah, yeah. You know? so to me that was interesting that was exciting and then Topher gets movies and he did black Klansmen, and he's always you know Topher was brilliant in the sense that he said because i said well do you want to be a big movie star do you want to be jim carrey do you want to be tom hanks and he said no i want to be paul giamatti i want to wow. get great parts and work for the rest of my life yeah. And so, and that's really what he's doing. Yeah. So he takes a movie here and there and he's brilliant in them and he doesn't have to have top billing and he doesn't, you know, right. I, I just have always really admired the way he worked. You know? And he wasn't like a, he, he wasn't like a big party guy or anything like that yeah. in LA. Like I've read, like he, he kind of stayed focused on the work and didn't do yeah. any shenanigans or anything like that. What yeah. show were you coming up? Were you coming off of third rock when you started that seventies? Yeah, I was actually working on both of them at the same time. Holy shit. And um, just kind of making the pilot yeah. in the 70s while I was still on Third Rock because the Turners kind of picked me out to do that show with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I had gone off to make a show for Tom Rhodes. Oh, um, Tom. that's yeah. awesome. Because Tom, Tom and I were really good friends. I made a show called Mr. Rhodes. I was not the showrunner. It was a very frustrating situation. Oh, I really wanted to quit that. 
but the Turners were like, you have to just stay the course because the only reason I really wanted to quit was because mm-hmm. I could go back to Third Rock, right. which was the greatest staff, the, the greatest sort of place to be. Hilarious and, show. Thank you. But One I of the all time. I mean, that show fucking made me. I, I have it on DVD, which I'll never get rid of because I'm always afraid that some channel. I like owning shit because I always feel like either even whether it's music or DVDs, because I don't know, at some point somebody decides you can't watch it anymore. <laughs> so yeah, it's like you can't watch 70s now. I don't think it's on a platform anywhere, which I've gotten so many emails and from on Instagram or wherever, because I let you know, I kind of you still have to ask to follow me, but there's so many people yeah. that would send me a message and they would talk to me about the show and I would just answer them back because of yeah. course you're sick. Sure. Know, and because they like what you do and they're like, why is it, why is it being taken off Netflix? And it's like, that's so far above my pay grade. <laughs> I have no like idea. you did it. I, yeah. Like, but, and I got that pain of it because they, it's a bingey kind of show. By the yeah. way, I only did the first four, technically five years. That was me. I didn't do six, seven and eight. And to, to tell you the truth, I've never seen those seasons because yeah. I wasn't there. And I, and I had such sort of control shit going on that I couldn't watch it without going, Oh, Oh, you know, like, yeah. because I had, I had sat in the room and edited and mixed and the music and everything I had done it. Like, and so it's really hard for me to watch, and pl- especially when they cut it up, they take out the Zeppelin song cause it costs too much. They change it. And it's like, I'm surprised right. because I watched it in its purest form. You know, yes. and I, so, you know, not to be precious, but it just, it's no, I mean, you know, but, but to be uh, coming from a fan of the show. And again, I have all the, now I didn't even realize it was off the streaming stuff. Cause I have it all on DVD too, but like, uh, that was, you know, six, seven, eight, not the strongest years. Yeah. I just, because you know, when and I, that left, makes sense now. Yeah. When I left Ashton and Topher made deals to do half as many shows. Cause they felt like, you know, yeah. stuff was happening for them. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, uh, but I had, uh, I had gotten divorced and I had my kids and I was trying to get them half the time and I was in court and I did finally win. And I was like, well, I'm, I'd rather make lunches. I'd rather do homework. I'd rather be with them. Yeah. So that's basically what I did. And I have that's no sweet. regrets. I have no regrets about that. And it was great. And I think I read so many books to them and they're both like brilliant ones. One of my daughters is a fantastic musician who teaches wow. autistic people how to play piano, but she oh also has her own band where she's lead guitarist and she plays the drums and she plays piano. She could play all of it, but she's got like a seven uh, member band. And my other daughter is an archeologist. Wow. Who's getting her master's who's been a dive master since 13 and she specializes in underwater archaeology which by the way is a growing field <laughs> every fucking thing's melting so I yeah don't regret, <laughs> i don't regret all the time i got to spend with them by not doing some yeah show, you know how thrilled are you that neither of them are comedians oh what <laughs> the oldest one actually was and she came in second at the comic con cosplay get the fuck out like she That's... came in second of wow um, she was the funniest fucking kid and just really funny even as a young like as an early teenager right we were talking about uh infinite jest who wrote infinite oh um david foster wallace yeah we were talking about david foster wallace and she was like you really got to watch this commencement speech that he gave Mm-hmm. And uh, I watched it and then I go, you know, I didn't know that he had killed himself. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, had a pretty bad case of the sads. <laughs> <laughs> that sums it up. <laughs> yeah, but it was just like so many, they're both so funny, but I'm right. super glad they didn't want to be, you know, comics. Cause yeah. it's fucking, you know, that's yeah. a tough thing. It's tough. I know what you mean. It is, it is, it is extremely tough. And I always wonder how people like, you know, uh, when they have kids and stuff like that and they start to go into the same field, are they just getting like PTSD flashbacks of club owners dicking them over and getting shitty food? And, you know, it's, well, my, it's my, gotta be, 
my oldest went up the first time she went up, she was under 10. Mm -hmm. It's like, like any comic. I'm like, I asked a friend of mine who's a comedian, Neil, I said, can you watch the kid tonight? Right. And, and he's like, yeah, no problem. And so he goes, he forgot he had a spot. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and there's no cell phone at that moment. I don't have a cell phone and it's that long ago. And he's like, well, I'm just going to bring her with me. And so, <laughs> well, by the way, she knew that Neil and I were comedians and she had written jokes. Right. Which, okay. So he brings her with him. And when he walks in the club, the club owner goes, Hey, what are you going to, you going to do a tight five? <laughs> and she goes, Okay. <laughs> and I'm sure it was a mistake, but now the club owner's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> you know, R right? I oh my tell god! Her, I can't tell a little kid, "I'm gonna put you up." I'm fucking with you. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and he's like, "God damn it!" But she went up, and she had jokes. And by the way, the audience is not pricks. They're like, "This is hysterical." Right, right. A Ten-year-old or however old year old kid is up there telling jokes. Yeah. And I saw it. No, I heard it. Somebody recorded it. And she got laughs. That's fucking awesome. You must have been beaming. I was thrilled. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Because she really, yeah. she knew how to write. She was always funny. She she just like fucking just, but the balls. Is she this the musician or the archaeologist? The musician. She never had yeah. fear. She never had that fear. You that's know, awesome. I was like, I don't know where... I always had the fear. And mm -hmm. that's why really when I was offered the choice between being a writer or a comedian, right. I was to become a writer. I also had a kid. By the way, the light is fading in California. And so <laughs> much, much like my soul, the darkness is taking over. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we had an earthquake in the beginning and now like there's some weird eclipse going on. <laughs> yeah, so I think they opened the seventh seal. I think that's the point we're at where it's like now the oh dark my God. is apocalypse is upon us and the horsemen are coming out of the ocean. <laughs> that's how all my guests leave, by the way. So that's all right. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Just face the darkness. Especially if they're comedians. Um, that's well, fucking darker awesome. Than, who's darker I, than a comedian? We, I, I could keep talking to you, but we, I know, I just want to let you know the time we are at one, uh, an hour and 20, but I can keep going if you want to keep talking. Cause this is phenomenal to me, but it's up to you, man. I don't want to keep you well, longer than. I actually think I'm, I'm, I think I'm having dinner with Felicia Michaels tonight. I don't know if you know her. I so I don't, but well, I I met. Okay, this is crazy that you said Felicia Michaels. Do you know Rob Bartlett? Yeah, I, Rob I mean, Bartlett and the, Joey Cola was just talking to them, and uh, and they mentioned Felicia Michaels, and I got her. Then we were talking about um, she. We were we couldn't decide who won. I'm saying it like I was there. Star Search. But, yes, Star Search in '91. Was it her? Star Search. That's that is ins I dude I can't even that's insane that you just said that right now. No, I uh, know because I remember. Yeah, tell her. T I mean, she doesn't know me, but tell her Rob Bartlett, Joey Cola, and whoever me, I guess, or whatever. But we were trying to figure it out. We thought it was her. Well, here's some more. Here's some Star Search trivia for you. Sure. I was on Star Search. I don't remember the year, and I and I was. It was very short lived, and I even told them, I, I don't think I'm right for your program. Mm -hmm. I probably only have two sets. Okay. So um, the first night is spectacular. I did everything. Mm -hmm. I did my three minutes of A, clean material. And <laughs> I I got a perfect score, which apparently was like didn't happen. I got a 4-0. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even remember who I was up against. And now uh -huh. the next time I'm going on, and I had said to them, I go, I, I can't win because I can't go a third time. I was like, Honestly, here, I'm going to walk into the light. Sure, um, sure. I said to them, I go, please, I can't win a third time, you know? Mm -hmm. And I and I really was hoping to God that I didn't win. And, right. And uh, so who am I up against, which is amazing? It's Larry Wilmore. Holy shit. I know. It's Larry Wilmore and I, and he's fucking brilliant. And he, has, yeah. he just destroys. And yet – the audience is bus loads of Christians from South Carolina. And at that point I had done jokes about Jesus. Oh, it's like 1987. They're not great jokes. One was, right. you know, uh, little kid. Hey, 
Hey, so there, can I show you? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Joey Cola. Here's Felicia. So, Felicia, Hi, Felicia. This is John Poveroma. How are you? I don't know if we've ever... I'm good. I don't know if we've ever met, but I was literally just talking to Rob Bartlett and Joey Cola, and we were just... And, and Melvin George, I think, was on. We were talking, all, all of us. Yes, and we were talking about just back in the day. Like, I'm saying, by the way, I'm not... I wasn't back in the day, but I was asking them stuff, and they were trying to figure out who won Star Search in 91, and I said, Felicia Michaels... And then they were like, I think you're right. Why do you know that? And then. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but we, and by the way, we were all like, I don't know if that's true. And not that we could have either looked on our phones, like, morons, <laughs> you know, but it's, but then I was just talking to Mark and he's like, I'm going out to dinner with Felicia Michaels. And I was like, are you, you, that's insane. So anyway, nice to meet you. And we were well, talking nice about you and. You. Nice to meet you. That was so, so cool. Yeah. All right. So Larry Wilmore. Yeah. Um, Pete, he, 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 oh, we tied and the audience gave it to him. And I was really oh my God, sort of great wow. about that. I was yeah. really happy about that. And then, so cut to, I don't even know how many years later, we're both at CBS Radford and he's mm -hmm. running the Bernie Mac show and I'm running seventies and we're both like, holy shit. Right. You know, because <laughs> our offices were like our buildings, our studios were right next to each other. And we're both like, what the fuck? Can you wow. believe this? Because that's insane. No, odds are that's not going to happen. We're right. going to be suffering at fucking Snickers in Indiana, Indianapolis. <laughs> and, you know, and yet here we are. And we both knew we won the fucking lottery. Right. You know? Wow. That's beautiful, yeah. man. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, I, I listen, I'll let you go. I, I li I'd like to have you on for a round two because I feel like we just. Oh, and Tommy Chong said to say hi, by the way. Oh, fuck, man. He's I had kid. him on a couple weeks ago and he was a joy. It was so such a blast. I love Tommy and he was the king. And if you have me on again, I'll tell you about the story. We smoked weed before a taping. I'll, 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 I will definitely have you on again. We're going we're gonna to go for a round two, man. Thank you so much. And Felicia, I'd like to have you on if you'd like to be on. <laughs> yeah, someday. She, I'll tell her. I feel bad that I'm just like, and you got to come. No, no, yeah, no. seriously. Thank you so much for doing this, dude. It no, was thanks, a man. That pleasure. Was a lot of fun. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jack. Take care, dude. See you, man. Dystopia tonight.